farm a lot of ground as well. <clears throat> and over the years, we have started doing, we raise corn, for example, and we raise corn for corn silage and also for grain. And we put the grain up as high moisture grain. We bring it in and grind it and pack it right in a silage pit, and it's ready to feed then from after that. It's ready to go. Uh, we've started using Roundup Ready seed in the, in the corn. We used to have to go out and cultivate the fields and cultivate them trying to, to keep the weeds down. Now you plant the crop, everything comes up, you go out and you spray it. You're chemically cultivating it. I have looked at the difference in the uses of the chemicals we used to use trying to suppress grasses and weeds in those cornfields. They would kill the worms, they would kill all the, the bugs that are in the soil. And, and then the problem was some of those chemicals like atrazine is a great product for, for corn, keeps down, the, suppresses the other competing weeds, uh, but it migrates with water. And so you'd start seeing atrazine in your runoff water off your fields. They were actually starting to find atrazine in some of the well waters as well. I don't put any of those chemicals on anymore. I'm putting this, this spray on the surface. It gets on the surface of the weeds, kills them. The corn is unaffected. And in the end, that has no runoff. There is no residual going anywhere else. It's right there on the field, not even in the soil. Another thing that we've been trying to do and have been working on for a number of years is uh, dealing with our irrigated lands. When my father started there with, with my mother, uh, it was all dirt ditches. There was a lot of erosion. It was hard to maintain, I mean, because we're irrigating. And when that water gets away, you, it, it starts cutting the soil and you start losing soil. Mm -hmm. When we irrigate, we use, we over the years, we've used dirt ditches, we've used cement ditches, we've used gated pipes and we've used wheel lines, and we're moving more and more in, on the places we can to center pivots. They are amazing. Uh, we've measured the grounds that we've been using them on, putting them on. We save at least a third of the water because we don't use it. There is no runoff going off that field, which allows me to use the manure from the cattle as a fertilizer, and we're not polluting the streams and the, and the, and the rivers, which is great for me. Uh, when you plant the field, you can turn on that pivot and it have, goes around and irrigates it. All the seeds come up uniformly. You end up with a uniform crop. We can also use that sprinkler to actually apply fertilizers through the pivots during the course of the year. We used to apply uh, corn fertilizer by going back in and, and knifing it in, literally knifing it in the, the rows. Well, that takes time. You're burning fuel with tractors and labor. And now we don't do that. So under those pivots, there's an additional benefit as well. Uh, if I'm growing alfalfa, I, I take that hay off and I turn that pivot on and within 24 hours, everything in that field has had a little bit of a drink. It started to recover, it suppresses the weeds and the alfalfa comes back so good. It's just, it's a really amazing deal. Another thing we found under the pivots that's been real beneficial is we can do minimal till. We go in, we spread the manure, we spread the fertilizer on top of that disc it or, or deep rip the field in and disc it down, plant it, and we're done. We don't go back. We save two or three or four trips across the field because you can. And just think of the fuel savings we're having on that. We're saving carbon emissions because of the use of those pivots uh, and because of what they allow you to do. So I'm a big fan of looking at new technologies and seeing how they apply. And in the end, yes, it's costly to buy a pivot, for example. But in the end, I'm saving a tremendous amount of money and I'm getting better yields.